It doesn't look that broken. It looks like it drove here. It's not very broken, Sylvia. It's not. It's driving Sylvia. It's driving it's Sylvia. Oh, no. What does this mean? This uh, means... Uh, fuck the police. Fuck the police. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Broken Sylvia, uh, which we should slowly start renaming to Working Sylvia. It's a very exciting episode as we are finally working towards showing you guys the footage of the car moving under its own power. Um, in the last six months, I've collected quite a bit of footage of us working on the car, and in this episode, I think we're finally going to be up to date with everything that has been happening. I'm also going to explain why we wanted to get this car driving after it's sitting around for about two years and I'm also going to explain why we are not allowed to drive it legally on the roads anymore. That and more to come in this episode. It might be a bit of a lengthy one compared to usual, but let's have a quick look at what happened previously. So a quick recap of what happened in the previous episode. Pretty much my friend Preston gave the engine a bit of a makeover and towards the end of the video, we installed the engine into the car. So even though the engine is in the car, there is still so much work to be done on the actual body of the car to get it ready to a stage where we can hit the road and be comfortable in it. So the first job on the list was to give the boot a good sand with some 320 grit sandpaper. And then I sprayed underbody protection inside the whole boot. And after that, I just brushed on two layers of gloss black enamel. And that gave it a real nice slick finish. And the reason I did this is my car never came with any boot interior, so I figured this would make it nicer than what it was before. Quality boot interiors are very hard to find, and if you do find them, they can be pricey. So I figured I wouldn't go down that route. Some people also say spraying the underbody protection will act as a bit of a sound deadener because it is quite thick, but I did have sound deadening left over from the R34 Skyline, so I did the entire boot and the inside of the quarter panels to reduce noise coming through the, you know, the rear subframe, the diff, and the exhaust is right there. So hopefully it did help a little bit in the noise reduction scheme of things. So with the boot done, we finally got to see the first sign of life from this car after like two years. They work? They f***ing <laughs> work! <laughs> I wish I got that on film. I'll go again. Go again? Yes, they're high beams because they're pretty wide the wrong way, but now they're extra high beams. <laughs> The next job on the list was to grab the Z32 rear calipers and give them a bit of a refresh. So I'm not too sure if I've ever gone into too much detail about what brakes are actually on the car, but we've got Z32 calipers on the front and back with the DBA rotors all around, but the fronts are a bit of a Frankenstein. So we've got the Z32 calipers with dog bones that spaces out the, the caliper further out, allowing you to put a bigger rotor on. So we don't actually use a Z32 rotor, we're using an R33 or an R34 GTR rotor, which is 324 mil in diameter. So with the brakes and GK Tech lines on, it was time to move on to deleting the VCT. Now, before you rip into me in the comment section about deleting the VCT, just quickly hear me out, we haven't had the best experience. Obviously, as you know, none of my cars ever run for me to run into the problem of a faulty VCT um, sprocket, but Danny has had two S15s, on his old S15, he has gone through two brand new VCT sprockets and solenoids, 
within 10,000 Ks. And on the new one, he has gone through a VCT sprocket and a solenoid within 3,000 Ks. Now, the solenoid doesn't stuff up on him, but it is recommended to replace the solenoid when you replace the sprocket. Apparently, stiffer valve springs will do that to it. Harry, in his S15 as well, his one has gone over time and it was due to be replaced. So I figured, um, instead of getting to a stage where I have to um, do it one day, while the rocket cover is off and while we're working on the car, we might as well delete it, get rid of it. Um, and that is the main reason I did it, is because we've had nothing but dramas with VCT sprockets. If, uh, if you know a way around it, please comment below. I'm, yeah, I'm all about it and, and I'd, I'd wanna hear. Snaps it. Oh yeah. Blink, blink. <laughs> so let's have a quick look at what Mr. Adrian the fabricator is up to and how he made these intercooler pipes. Should I put more safety on? No, it's fine. You reckon? Yep. So a massive thank you goes out to Adrian for not only coming to the workshop to do the work but also doing an amazing job. Uh, pretty much in the past with other fabricators I haven't had the best experience. Things take too long, um, things don't get done that were supposed to get done. So for somebody to come to the workshop, smash it all out in one day was such an awesome thing because we still continue to make progress on the car while he was working around the engine bay and all the intercooler pipes. He had everything tacked up within a day and then few days later he just welded it up in his own time and we got the intercooler pipes back pretty much when the car was ready to start. Alrighty so I think it's finally time to explain why I wanted to have this car done all of a sudden and a bit of a backstory behind it. I'm going to try and make it as quick as possible um, because people talking to a camera is never fun to watch. All right. Last year, August, I start working on the R34 Skyline and I told myself I'm going to try and spend as much time on the car as possible to try and make as much progress as I can and post as many YouTube videos as I can possibly. So um, with a lot of other things going on with work and school and stuff, um, the first thing to go were friends. So after the workshop, after work or after school, I would not see my mates and that was that went on for a good four or five months. I pretty much became the most antisocial person ever. Uh, didn't do anything for New Year's, like big events like that. And it was slowly starting to get to me. So I figured we still have a bunch of broken cars in the workshop. I am not doing anything. And an event called Race Wars is coming up. Now, obviously the car is kind of stock. It's not going to be competitive. Um, pretty much Race Wars is a massive airstrip that they rent out for a weekend and there's just a bunch of racing and you get to meet a bunch of people and it's a good time. So I figured, well, let me get one of my cars done so I can actually drive it down and feel some sense of accomplishment. Like I've spent so much time in the workshop and all the cars have always been broken. 
This one has always been the closest to being complete, even with the other engine in it, and it has always been the car that was going to be the cheapest to bring back on the road. So obviously this was the one that we were going to get done to take down to race wars. Ale by bylo ještě ne. First time driving it up onto a trailer instead of pushing it. Pretty good feeling. Pretty shocked I didn't burst. I'm calling Josh, Jack, and Josh. Who am I that you're obsessed with? I was on her from the jump. I think she was wearing pumps or bands when I first met her. Not really bad. So now it is Wednesday morning. We are very close to our deadline being Friday morning that we have to leave for race wars, which is four or 500 kilometers south from where we live. Um, but it is time to take this thing for its first test drive to the wheel alignment shop and back and see if it's going to make it. It was a very nervous and exciting moment at the same time because we haven't driven the car properly since it was fully torn apart and put back together. So we were definitely expecting the worst, but believe it or not, the car actually made it there and back without a single issue. All right, maybe the handbrake cables 
I didn't clip on, but other than that, without a single issue. But then we came into the workshop and this is where disaster struck. There was a massive pool of petrol around the car. Uh, I didn't know what the problem was at the time, but it turns out that I might have not connected my fuel lines properly. And unfortunately, that was it for us. We got very close, but not close enough. And Wednesday night, I had given up on the car because I knew that the next day was planned for a bunch of small little jobs to actually get the car properly road ready. Um, and then you throw into the mix that we have to drop a rear subframe out to get to the fuel tank and all its lines. We just, it, it wasn't going to happen. But then out of the blue, my phone starts ringing and it is my friend Danny. I tell him the bad news and he goes, oh, you'll have the tank in and out of the car within a few hours. And I knew that wasn't the case, but it was just that little bit of hope that I needed to get stuck into Thursday to try and make it all happen. But everything feels wrong Just doesn't feel right So it's 6 p.m. and I've got a feeling like we are going to make it. So I call my friend William in for a little bit of assistance to put the whole car back together and to finish up on all those small little jobs. And while he was making his way down to the workshop, I quickly ducked out to our friends over at Design and Apply. And I had this vision in mind to use an old school Nismo logo on an LMGT4. Very, very last minute, they whipped me up a design. They, they made up a banner and then it was 10 p.m. So we are slowly finishing up on the big jobs on the back end of the car and it was time to move on to the other million small little jobs we had to finish. But then we got interrupted by Mr. Dean from Design and Apply that came through with the goods. Black is gonna look good. Black is gonna look good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
once again, massive shout out to the guys over at Design and Apply. And if you need any sort of business cards, logos, design work for your business done in Perth, Western Australia, definitely pay them a visit. And I'm going to leave all their social media accounts down in the description below. So now it's like 2am and I look down at my phone, it is Friday. Today is the day we are supposed to be leaving. Have we done it? Have we not done it? We look at the car and this thing is running. But the problem is we still don't know if we have fixed the issue. So we put it back down on the ground, we go to the local petrol station, we take it easy, fill it up with fuel yeah, and boy. on the way back we'll drive. He put the car through its paces, um, came into the workshop and looked underneath. There is no fuel, there is no more power steering fluid. We have accomplished what we thought we weren't gonna get done. So at this stage, all I wanted to do is just go home, have a shower, have a nap, and I was back at the workshop within two hours to load the car up with its essentials, a few fluids, fire extinguishers, um, and then went home again, packed my stuff, and I hit the road. Went over to my friend Dean's house where we met up. His dad has a 1300 horsepower R35 GTR. Pretty mental. Um, we made our way down to Albany slowly, Halfway through, the Red Bulls just stopped kicking in. I got into the passenger seat and just passed out, let Dean do the rest of the driving. Got into Albany, we met a, uh, definitely we met a few cool people. Um, we saw Cool Cars race, it was a great weekend. Got in contact with um, Kyle from 1320 Video. He ended up coming to the workshop after Race Wars, checking out the shop, very cool experience, super humble guy, down to earth. He even gave me a little gift, which was awesome. Um, but no, it was definitely a great weekend and to get to the part why we're not allowed to drive this car on the road anymore, pretty much uh, Saturday night, that would have been the second day of actually driving this car after two years and paying registration for years and years, uh, how long I've had the car for, I got yellow stickered. Pretty much a police officer is allowed to give you a yellow sticker if he thinks your car is not suited for the road. So during race wars, obviously there's a lot of high, high horsepower vehicles and these guys actually came from the city. They made their way four or 500 Ks down like we did and they started stickering cars like there's no tomorrow. And mine was obviously one of them leaving the pizza shop. They got me for the banner and the wheels. The rear wheels are definitely a little bit wide. They don't stick out that much. They might've stuck out five to 10 mil. In America, that's called fitment. In Australia, that's called illegal, um, but it is what it is. You can't do much about it. So they were on a mission and they definitely got us. So to make the car road legal again, you have to go through in pit inspection. The car was pretty much ready for a pit inspection, uh, but then I started looking into little things. We started getting a misfire and we had another problem where there was a few little jobs such as water squirters. If you look at my bonnet on the S14, there are no water squirters on the bonnet. I have deleted it, I've shaved it off. So we have to retrofit a, a bottle and a motor in the boot, run the lines through the interior under the car and have it go into the plastics where the windshield wipers are. So it can piss water onto the windshield and it's another thing that is stopping me from having the car back on the road again. So now it's August, it's still off the road. I've been slowly chipping away at it, haven't been thinking about it too much. But yeah, I think we are finally fully up to date with what has been happening with the broken Sylvia. Now it's actually a working Sylvia, but it's unregoed. Um, very long video, a lot of talking. Not everyone's gonna watch it, not everyone's gonna enjoy it, but some people definitely are keen uh, to see what I'm up to, how the cars are progressing. So thank you very much for watching. Um, and we'll be back on this shortly. See ya.